Hello and welcome to the Tabletop Bellhop Express Check-In. Today I'm recapping the last Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast live show, episode 34, Bellhop Edda. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Ask the Bellhop. This week, we were the ones asking the questions. This episode, we welcomed The Other Tracy, a.k.a. Tracy Barnett, to our show. Now, the main reason Tracy was on the show was to talk about their new RPG, Iron Edda Accelerated, which was kickstarted back in August 2018, is already out to backers, and should have just hit game store shelves in the last couple of weeks. Now, since Tracy obviously isn't here for our Express Trek-In, all I can really do is tell you to check out the full podcast, which went live last Tuesday. You can find it here on YouTube as well as on our on your favorite podcatcher. Now, what I will do for those of you watching this is let you know some of the questions that Tracy answered for us. Now, after giving us an overview of just how busy they are and how many projects they're currently working on, Tracy likes to stay busy. Way too busy for me. Uh, they got into what Iron Edda Accelerated is all about. Now, Iron Edda is Viking Pacific Rim, where players summon the bones of dead giants to help them fight against dwarven destroyers and protect their holdfast during Ragnarok. It's an over-the-top, epic RPG using the Fate Accelerated system. Now, during the interview, we learned where the inspiration for the game came from as well as why Tracy chose the Fate Accelerated system for this game. We discussed game publishing and the use of Kickstarter. We talked about what historical research Tracy did and the specific books they used during that research. We also talked about podcasting and Tracy's own podcast, The Other Cast. Tracy mentioned how great it was working with the folks at Encoded Design, and we talked about quite a bit more. I know I'm always telling you to check out the full episodes, but in this case, it really is a must. There's no way I can summarize the full interview here, and you're bet much better off hearing it in Tracy's own words from their own mouth. I'd like to take a moment to thank our new sponsor, Quiver Time, makers of the Quiver Deluxe card carrying case and other premium card game protection items. Head over to quivertime.com slash bellhop and use code DINGDING to get 10% off their entire catalog. For you Canadians out there like me, this code also works at amazon.ca. Now, due to the fact the entire Bellhop team was at Breakout Con up in Toronto over the weekend, we did not have a Gloomhaven live stream last time. So that's going to have to wait a bit before we get another episode up. Though on most weeks, you can join us live at 8.30 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv slash tabletopbellhop and watch us continue our ongoing Gloomhaven campaign. Tabletop Gaming Weekly, where we look back at the games that hit our tabletops last week. Now, last Monday, I had a group of people over and got to try out a new expansion for Builders of Blankenberg. Now, Builders of Blankenberg is a game that I originally did a preview for back in uh, 2015 on my old Windsor Gaming Resource blog. Now, happy with that preview, Cobblestone Games contacted me recently and wanted to know if I was interested in checking out a new expansion they plan to kickstart in April. That expansion is going to be called Fields and Flocks. So Monday night, we started off and just replayed the base game of Builders and Blankenberg, because it had been some time. Now, this is a hidden gem Euro game where players are building the city of Blankenberg. Uh, this is a competitive game where you're looking at the growing number of citizens who are moving into the town and trying to build the buildings that will be the most attractive to each of these citizens. Now, each of these people coming to town are represented by cards, and they list three places that the people want to stay when they get to town in order of preference. So if the first building isn't available, they'll stay at the second. If that's not available, they'll stay at the third. If that's not available, they go to the end. So it's all about trying to plan ahead and build the buildings that are most attractive to most people. Very rewarding, though, is when you build a building that's top on the list when someone else owned the one just below, and you basically steal that person from the other player. Now, actually, building buildings is done by accumulating resources. Those resources are gained through auctions and through a public marketplace system. In addition to this, there's also some random elements that include events and visitors that come to town throughout the game. Now, overall, I really dig this game. 
I love the way the citizen track works, and the unique blind bid auction uses a, a, some dice to determine what's up for auction that I've never seen before, and I've never seen it since in any future games. Now, speaking of the actual expansion fields and flocks, this adds a worker placement element to the game. Now players each start off with a surf and a field and a f or a flock card that is drafted at the start of the game. Each turn during a new harvest phase, players will use their serfs to either hire more serfs, purchase new fields or flocks, or tend their existing fields and flocks. Now when you tend a flock in the game, that removes removing water cubes from them. Once all the cubes are gone, that field or flock is ready. Now once ready, serfs can now be used to sell the animals and produce on the ready fields and flocks to the citizens in town. There's also a mechanic where you can attach fields and flocks to the buildings that have been built. Now, Fields and Flocks adds a significant level of complexity to Builders of Blankenberg. This also adds a lot of length to the game. We found so far that using Fields and Flocks pretty much doubles the playtime of the base game. Now, overall, the five of us that played enjoyed the new gameplay elements and new decision points. Uh, we did run into a few rule issues, but after a couple emails back and forth with the designer, uh, I've now found out what we did wrong and given him some suggestions on how to improve the rulebook. Overall, I'm looking forward to more plays of Builders and Blankenberg with Fields and Flocks. Now, this past week, Sean tried out a new Cryptozoic deck building game. This was the Cartoon Network crossover Crisis. Uh, he also added in the Anni Animation Annihilation expansion to that. Uh, he noted both boxes are completely compatible, and he just mixed the two up uh, right away before even his first play. Now, Sean noted, while the game uses the same basic mechanics as the other Cerebus engine games, this particular set of games did some things to try to make the game more cartoony and silly, and for him and his son, that kind of ruined the game. Now, this is all done through the weakness cards, which in a normal Cerebus engine game are just um, negative point cards that kind of clog up your deck. Well, in this version of the game, the Cartoon ver Network version, they force players to do silly things. Things like playing rock, paper, scissors, or having to fist bump the other players. To Sean, this just detracted from the actual gameplay. Now, he did note that perhaps a group of younger kids may enjoy it, or maybe a group of adults with some adult beverages. Before or during the game, they may have fun playing this. As usual, this weekly look back only scratches the surface. For more discussion about these games, be sure to check out the full podcast right here on YouTube, or on our Tabletop Gaming Podcast playlist, or on your favorite podcatcher. Just look for the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. Now we're here to answer your questions. Do you have a gaming or game night question you would like us to tackle in a future Ask the Bellhop segment? You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or you can just head over to the website tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Now remember we record a new episode of Tabletop Bellhop Live every Wednesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern and it would be awesome if you joined us over on Twitch in our lobby, the chat room. That's at twitch.tv slash bellhop, tabletop bellhop, one word. If you've been enjoying the content we're providing, it would be awesome if you would consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com forward slash tabletop bellhop. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Express Check-In. You can always find us across the web and social media as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Drop by our website at tabletopbellhop.com for more gaming content. Be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking over here, and check out our latest video by clicking over here. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge and RPG maitre d'. Good night, and game on.